Hello there. Welcome back. So, you are joining us on the final part of our adventure. We have a few more trials to make our way over, such as this short staircase here. Possibly the hardest trial in the entire series right there. Yeah, we're here to have a little chat with our friend Andre before we head off. Want to make sure that we've got everything sorted with him. Hello there, Andre. When I was in the painted world just now, I picked up a sweet ember. Any chance you want to have a little look at it? Show me that ember of yours. Well, I've never heard of a black ember. Hmm. How about leaving that ember with me? I find it strangely fascinating. That was a little... A little strange. If you recall, the black ember's the thing to do with the occult. The, the you know, against the gods kind of thing here. Andrew, to me, always seemed like a kind of a good man, a working man. You know, he's sitting here, he's making a bunch of weapons and selling them to various men and women of the Underdead. Or whatever you want to call them. And, well, yeah, he's like really fascinated with this black, dark ember. So, of course, we're going to give it to him. Yes. Well, thank you. This ember really is something special. I'm already under its spell. I sense great potential, indeed. Well, a little creepy there, but anyway. Do we have anything we can level up? Ooh, we have one chunk. <laughs> we can make our bandit's knife ever so slightly better. Isn't that terrific? He doesn't- there's no modifications we can actually do other than that, right? We can make a divine spider shield. No, that will be alright. I don't think we have the stuff to re reinforce this any further, do we? No, we're good. So let's just sit here. Give him a few last souls. We have a lot of stuff, holy shit. There we go. Give him a few last souls before we head off. Don't get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Thanks, Andre. Always always leaving you with the with a good word. Anyway. We now need to head off and have a little chat with another friend. Ooh. We're back at Firelink Shrine. Eleven months. We've been playing this game for 11 months, it's non-stop, just every single day, new Dark Souls content. Hello, do you want to do a little reinforcation here? There we go, I don't think we have another one. Nope, we have- we have- <laughs> We had two more Estus Flask upgrades I haven't been using the entire game, well that was handy. So yeah, we, she doesn't really want to be spoken to. Forgive me. I am impure. Yeah, we've spoken to her. We will leave, and we will head off and have another speak to another NPC. These are our goodbyes. We're, we're saying goodbyes to everyone before we go off on our final adventure. So, of course, who else would we speak to but our good old friend? Hello, friend. How's it going? Oh, hello there. Hello. I'm pleased to see you safe. As always, if you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. All right, friend. I uh, don't really need anything you've got. I just wanted to say hello. I guess I could upgrade my Pyromancer's Flame a bunch. Not that I'm really going to be using it for anything, but I theoretically could if I really wanted to. So, you know what? Goodbye, then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go all day. You be safe as well. Don't take any strange chaos pyromancies from people, alright? You stay here. You stay here. You stay safe. You have a good time, alright? Hey there. This is someone who I don't think actually think we've really spoken to much this game, but he is sitting here. From when you meet him in the catacombs, young Patchens returns here, doing his little squats there. What's up? Oh, we meet again. How many of you are there? You've come at the perfect time. I'm done with the looting. I'm a humble merchant now. And wondrous treasures have I, at a special price for you. There you are. Have a nice look at them. Oh, relax. No more funny business out of me, my friend. Alright, well, we're gonna learn his gesture, so now we can do prostration. Terrific. What items does he want to sell to us? So he's got Eyes of Death, he might be in Nito's clan. He's got Divine Blessings and sells them for 20,000 souls. <laughs> he has a lot of humanity, 16 humanity, which remember you get from killing human people. So yeah, he's got heals and great heals excerpt, which is horrifying, because he hates clerics. His thing is that he hates clerics, so the fact that he's selling these probably means that he's murdered a few people. 
and stolen these, so... Yeah, I'm made by clerics, made by advanced clerics. He almost certainly killed people and stole these. Probably the two boys we met down below. He also sells a bunch of really cool items. The mace is an amazing item. It only scales with strength, I think. So yeah, if you get 27 strength and dual wield this, you'll do max damage. It's insane. He has some decent other gear. Mostly just the fact that all of his gear is clearly stolen from other people. So the Crescent Axe, a well-used old bronze battle axe with a long hilt and a crescent-shaped blade. One of the blessed weapons of the Way of the White, which is basically like this game's Christianity thing. Remember the boys in blue? They were from the Way of the White. This is bequeathed to the cleric warriors who have proven their faith. I believe this is also a cleric weapon. <laughs> Um, it doesn't say it, but I think the cleric in this game starts off with it, so if you use that as your starting class, you start with a mace. It's got a canvas talisman, which is something used for casting miracles of the gods. Clearly not something he'd run around with, and of course the Thoroland talisman. From the Thoroland boys. Yeah, he's been a bit naughty. He literally just straight up sells cleric gear. <laughs> it's kind of dark, but you know, it's okay gear. He also sells the various masks of the game. Which, uh, I mean, if you, <laughs> if you want, if you want it, you can buy the Mask of the Father here, so yeah. Well, nothing appeals to you. No. Nope. Well, you must have poor taste. We're gonna deal with him in our own special way. Get up. Stand up. Alright, stand up. What? Get over there. Ow. That's an owl, yeah. Curses. Stop. No, well, we, 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 we're, we're pushing you off the edge. <laughs> we don't, no more of you, alright? Look, we're gonna do a little kick. A little kick. Goodbye, Patches, you little shit. <laughs> no more, alright? He's hurt enough people. And also, as a bonus, you can actually see- I think that's Blight Town down there. If you were curious, I'm fairly certain that is just straight up Blight Town. I might be wrong, might be somewhere else, but... Where's the giant tree? Yeah, you see that giant tree over there? I think that's the giant tree from Blight Town, so I'm pretty sure that's where that is. Just a cool little tip. As we leave the crime scene, and I <laughs> no, hope no one saw that cheeky action going on. Oh, also, this man. What happened, friend? What happened to our friend up top? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... Yeah, he never tells us anything particularly interesting about that, so you know what? We're getting rid of you. He gets angry really fast. If you remember Patches, he took two swings to become angry. He's got a really good voice actor. But yeah, he's just instantly into being angry. He's using... I don't know, remember what that's called. It's the, it's the big old area of effect god attack. But yeah, he's using the mace and a shield and a bunch of other random shit. We can just smash him in the face. I was trying to bait out a little parry though. We can completely block through that though because we've got a good shield. So it literally does nothing. I also know he's not going to attack me with his shield or his sword because he's holding out his talisman right now if you've noticed. And we can just sit here. We can just smash him. We can do a little parrying. We can smash him in the face. Don't you heal? Don't you heal? What are you doing? I see you trying to heal. Go into that- go, go into that vase, you little shit. Murdering people. Stop that. Don't kick me in the face. I'm actually trying to remember the parry time. No, stop! Be gone. That's right. What do you drop? Well, you know what? It's ended like this. You're a bad person. He drops two humanity and an ivory talisman. Now, this is an interesting item. Ivory talisman. Medium for casting miracles of the gods. Ivory talismans are granted only to female cl clerics, and their value is affected dramatically by their owner's faith. He wasn't using that, he was using a Thoroland talisman, but on his body, he had the talisman of that woman up there. So the whole story here was, those other two men who were here before were actually sent here to protect the woman. I don't know what he was here for, I'm assuming he was a spy or something, maybe not, maybe he was a, an outcast, but he just straight up murders, as far as I know, the lady up there, when she comes out of the catacombs, steals her talisman, and just has the, has the gas to just to stand there and lie in your face. So he's not worth keeping around. And if I have a little run around, I do believe there is another little secret that we can find related to him. So, if we do a little hop off of here, yes, down there, that's where we're going. I think we can survive this fall. We're about to find out one way or another. Oh, yep, just about. We... This, I feel like the full damage in this, in this game is exponential. Like, any more than that, we might have just taken way, way more. Anyway, here's a secret stash of a bunch of chests just littered around here. Filled with cracked red-eye orbs, which are used for invading other people. Morning star and a talisman. And a home- and six homeward bones. Morning star. Hammer with a sharp spike on its pommel. 
One of the more barbaric weapons of clerics. Uniquely, this hammer does thrust damage and causes bleeding. Standard talisman issued to common believers. So, I feel like that sets in stone that he is clearly either just a bad cleric, or he is just an ordinary person posing as a cleric. He used like a morning star, goes around, smashes people in the face with his barbaric weapon, uses an ordinary talisman, and is just a bit of a bumhole. Here's Lloyd's talisman. Talisman issued by all Father Lloyd's cleric knights to hunt down the undead. Blocks Estus recovery within the limited area. In the outside world, the undead are recursed creatures, and Lloyd's cleric knights are widely praised for their undead hunts. This blessed talisman blocks undead recovery, allowing the knights to fight with impunity. So, maybe he's not an ordinary person. Perhaps he is a cleric of All Father Lloyd. Maybe that is a, a completely different church related to the Way of the White. Maybe they hate each other. Because what that does is you can actually use that in PvP, so other people can't use Estus. In this game, your main character is undead. That's the whole thing. Chosen undead, all that. So his thing, that church's thing is to go around hunting the undead, using that to stop them from healing, and then just smashing them in the face with a morning star, whatever they happen to have. Seems to be a bit more of a barbaric church. And as far as I can tell, that was what he was, that's what perhaps he was sent here to do. He was sent here to hunt that lady and murder her. So a bit creepy. I think that's all we have to do in Firelink Shrine here. We'll do one final level up. Finishing with 35 Endurance, Power Within, and a Pyromancy Flame. You know what this means, right? We're heading off to the final area. Which, funnily enough, is actually straight up within Firelink Shrine. So yeah, the whole thing we've been doing this whole game is exploring and gaining souls, powerful souls. For what purpose, you might have forgotten, but we're about to re-find out. As we take a bit of a leap of faith and just dive straight into this pit. Here we are, at Firelink Altar, the final stage of the game awaits us as we'll walk up to the Lord Vessel. The thing we've been using to teleport, funnily enough, has been this. And we're going to rest here. We're going to grab our souls, we're going to toss them in. So, this isn't clearly not an ordinary bonfire. We've also just filled it full of the souls of Seath, Nito, the Four Kings, and the Witch of Isolith, as we have some small issues getting over this staircase, and then we move a bit faster and make it over. No worries. This is a very, very interesting area. I'm fairly certain that if you fall off the edge there, you just die. Here are a bunch of just invisible... Silver Knights of Anor Orlando. Spirits, they're not people. You walk through them. What this corridor is, a lot of people have their own opinions of. I think I'll leave it up to you to decide what you want it to be as we go and have a look at the final area of the game. Hidden deep below Firelink Shrine, or perhaps in a different world, different timeline, a different time, is the Kiln of the First Flame, the final, final, final area. A huge wasteland of just ash. This is all ash. This isn't snow. This is from fire. Something really big. A huge fire erupted. Wiped out an entire a just army of people. We'll, we'll, we'll find out as we go on. And we see some black lights. This is where people theorize where the black lights came from. If we just stab him directly in the arse. <laughs> I think if this was a plus 15 dagger, we could one-shot him with this weapon. Again, in the arse. Not too much of an issue there. You drop one of your weapons, don't you? Or just a chunk? No. I think there's a bit of a chance you'll get their weapon. I think if you kill the very last one, they're guaranteed maybe to drop a weapon, but I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, the story is... Gwyn comes down here to light the fire 
to try and keep the world going a bit longer. And he takes some of his silver knights with him. I think some of the silver knights join him, and they become the black knights. They die, and their armor is scorched. As a result, they become these black knights, and they do a shitload of damage as well. They've got humongous weapons. Very good in speedruns that aren't, don't use glitches. Do you mind? I need to uh, do a bit of exposition, exposition here, so I just stab you in the ass quickly. So yeah, the ones that stay behind and get scorched in an event we'll soon probably experience. Their armor and everything becomes black. They're dead. They're spirits. They're having a great time. They can completely just murder through our block. Doesn't matter because they have a weak bottom. Always protect your bottoms, everyone. What do you drop? More chunks? They drop more and more and more chunks. But basically, some of the knights stay behind in Anor Londo to defend it. Or at least people think. Hence why you still have some normal silver knights. But yeah, these are like the elite soldiers who stayed behind to do a bit of battling. A bit of good old battling. Quite a weird area here. A bit of platforming that has to be done. If you want to do a bit of exploration, there's a few little side paths here that will drop items. But I'm mostly just going to try and make my way through here. Without dying too badly, I think this area is okay for soul farming as well, if you're having issues with the uh, area we're coming up to. You can stand here, fight the enemies over and over again, and they'll drop a decent amount of souls, some decent level up gear and stuff as well. Oh, I just tried to parry his uh, his shield block. Shouldn't have done that. Let's try this again, let's try this carefully. That wasn't it, okay. Well, you know what, we're gonna go back to the good old-fashioned kick him off the- Oh, we can't kick him off the edge, they actually have poise. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if they have enough points, you can't kick them. That's what happened there. Never mind, we'll just... <laughs> Goodbye. Um, I guess we don't we don't get his item. It's just sitting down there. Alright, well, what we did there was we backstabbed him, and in the animation, our character just threw him off the edge. It's kind of badass. Ah, oh, here we go. The Black Knight gear. This armor is amazing. If you need really good armor for everything, this is really good. I think it has a good fire resistance on it as well, but we'll have a little read. So... Comparing it to the Silver Knight gear, yeah, it has a higher fire defense. That's the kind of thing going on here, but less lightning. So, Helm of the Black Knights who haunt Lordran. It's key word, haunt. The knights followed Gwyn when he departed to link the fire, but then they were burned to ashes by the newly kindled flame, wandering the world dis as disembodied spirits ever after. The description kind of calls back to the Silver Knight thing who we picked up in Anor Londo. This is the Silver Knights who remained in the Forsaken Capital in service of their goddess. So, due to the fact that this says haunt, and they all die in a weird puff of cloud, this is one of the reasons everyone seems to assume that they're all ghosts. So I'm more than willing to accept that as we kind of move on here. That gear is nice. It also looks cool if we quickly equip it. Yeah, look, it just, it just makes you into a mini little black knight. It looks badass as hell, like some kind of Skyrim boss. Very, very heavy. We haven't really gone for a strength too heavy in build, so we can't really roll in it. I'm pretty sure it's a fat roll. Yeah. So we're not going to actually be able to use this, but yeah, if you want to have an amazing armor set, this is what you want to go with, or at least pick a few bits out of it, maybe the helmet and the chest piece, and then mix and match with other stuff. That's kind of the fun of this game. Obviously, for lore reasons, we're going to be keeping on the leather armor, because that's what we are. We're the leather armor boy. Move up here. Be quite careful here. If you are doing a boss run, it is very possible to roll off the cliff. I've definitely done that on a couple of occasions, but anyway... Let's come down here, have a little chat with another Black Knight. And by a chat, I mean stabbing him in the back. Which, in a way, I guess is our chat. They've also all got their own unique weapons equipped. They're all the different types of uh, Black Iron gear. So if you really want to farm for a cool weapon, this is where you kind of have to be, really. Some cool stuff going on here. Oh, dear. <laughs> what were you doing there? Do you take bleed? I don't like that. <laughs> it just does, like, a really slow attack. I'm pretty sure if that hit you, would one-shot you, so watch out for that. White Titanite Chunk, yeah, so these aren't things we need, but if you wanted to level up stuff, yeah, you could. Hello. So, here's a Stabby Boy. Here's another Stabby Boy, directly in the bum. These, the knights at this point you really shouldn't have any issue with, especially if you've gone through Anor Londo, you'll be used to parrying them, or at least backstabbing them. Not too much issue to have, be had there. Blue Titanite Chunk, and we'll move on to the final fog wall of this game. Have a little look around. We've entered this giant arena thing that you saw before. Not entirely sure what it's meant to be. Some people think it's meant to be a giant tree, which seems a bit strange, but I think if you look at this area from above, it's literally just like a giant tree. You see this big old fence around everything up there? Not entirely sure what that's meant to be, but anyway, we said a lot. <laughs> with, with all of that and everything gone, we're going to move on. We're going to pop ourselves a power within. 
I'm going to go look at the last cutscene before we have a little sip, actually. We're going to have a little, little look at the last cutscene. Of which there is absolutely none. The ordinary badass boss music that plays throughout the game is completely replaced with this really forlorn, depressed piano tune. And we are fighting Gwyn. Gwyn is a really interesting boss. If you fight him ordinarily, which I'm pretending to do here, he's really difficult. If you fight him the way that the community does, though, you pretty much just parry him over and over again. So we're just gonna try and get a little bit of time. He does a bit of a grab attack. I haven't fought this boss in a while, so you have to forgive me if I try and remember his timings and stuff. We probably will die a couple of times. But if you remember what you're doing, it's normally not too bad to parry him. So yeah, we were underprepared there. We're gonna come back and give him a proper visit once we've remembered what we're doing. You can also use them to practice parrying. As always, I'm a tiny bit out of date with the old parrying system, so it's always nice to have a little bit of practice just before you go in on the boss. Oh, he dropped his sword and a chunk. So you can also use these guys to farm for chunks if you want to level up your weapons, which we probably won't have to do, but we'll have a look. Black Knight Sword. Great sword, great sword of the Black Knights who wander Lordran. Used to face demons. The large motion that puts the weight of the body into the attack reflects the great size of their adversaries a long time ago. So this might be a, pretty much the same description as the other Black Knight weapon, but yeah, it's a huge strength weapon. Does a shite load of damage. Does a pretty cool move set where you just smash things over the face with it. Quite a fun weapon. If you can get that early on, you're going to have a really fun run through. Ooh, I don't think we have enough time to actually use power within. We might be able to use it as we come in. Yeah, he gives you time to buff. If you were curious, I think Power Within is just a straight, like, 40% damage bonus for the cost of a tiny bit of HP, which is really nice. I need to try and learn his timing, because I know he, he does a grab attack you don't want to be hit by. And we, we're mostly just trying to hit him with the, uh, what's that? He kicks you with the back of his leg, holy shit. We're mostly just trying to wait for him to do an ordinary sword attack that we can just parry. Like that. Go into the face. Yeah, that, that, does, that does quite a bit of damage. So yeah, this boss is quite weak to parries. As long as you get good with the timing. Oh, he does a kick. The kicks always offset me a little bit. You're meant to go for that ordinary over-the-head sword, as I've been saying, but if you get wrong, you do kind of get screwed over a little bit, but yeah. Not normally too much of an issue, especially if you've got... Like, this This dagger isn't plus 15. This is just a dagger on, like, plus 10 or something, plus 11. So if you just get any weapon at all that's good at parrying, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. If you seriously are having issues, you can always run a little parry shield action there, but... Shouldn't be too bad. It's mostly just really enjoyed making this battle go on for as long as possible, because I really like the music. Like, one of the best songs in the entire series. Like, 100%. Not really worth dying over and over again to, perhaps. Need to escape. He doesn't really give you very much time to heal. That grab attack is kind of your best time. You can kind of chain heals like that and hope he doesn't- Oh, he's going to grab you. Oh god, he might actually get us this time. We're not going to have time here to heal, are we? Oh dear. That was quite unlucky, yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't maybe extend the battle longer than needed. I just really like this fight. Alright then. Do you want to do this properly this time? You, me. Power within. Thank you. I do not appreciate you doing the kick attack. I find it quite offensive. So I wouldn't mind it if you would just, just use the same sword attack over and over again. And allow me to just stab you directly in the face. Or in the groin. I do not mind groin. You've been here long enough. It's time for a new person to uh, to take over, I think. No more. Thanks for everything. So... There we have it. Lord Gwyn. Taken down. Let's have a little read. Our final read. Soul of Lord Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight and Cinder, who linked the first flame. Lord Gwyn bequeathed most of his power to the gods and burned as Cinder for the first flame. But even so, Lord Gwyn's soul is a very powerful thing indeed. So, the story, the final story of Dark Souls is that you as a player, you've beaten Lord Gwyn. Basically, the god of what was looking after this world. What he had done here is he'd sacrificed himself for the final bonfire in order to 
essentially save humanity and keep it going on for longer, lighting the flame, keeping everyone going, keeping all the bonfires flowing, keeping everyone happy. We're not going to take that path, though. That's the path they wanted us to take. That's the path that the big old snake with a moustache told us to do. It's the path that the weird snake man pretending to be a giant woman told us to do. We're not going to listen to them. We're doing our own things. We still have some minor issues with stairs here and there, but we're really the one in charge here, I think. My lord, bless thy safe return. Let Karth and Frank serve your highness. We are here to serve your highness. So, that will be the final episode of this Dark Souls series. It's been 11 months since we've started. We've gone on a few paths, a few journeys. You can probably hear the audio through my headphones. <laughs> it's very, very loud. But I'm willing to take that here to say thank you all very much for watching for the last nearly a year and supporting the series. It's been wonderful. I hope to see you all soon in a new adventure. You'll hopefully know soon what that is, but I will end it there for today. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.